A good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tenerdi to Human, and welcome to this top five most entertaining units from Total War's Rome Barbarian Invasion. Today, we're going to dip into the joy that is Barbarian Invasion and its silly and wonderful units alike. As I said in the title here, it's the most entertaining, the most fun unit. It's not necessarily the best, but the ones that just give you the most joy. And this is one of those games that really encapsulates it. It tried so many new different things, it threw in a lot of silly units. So let's dip straight into my top five then and see which units make the grade. At number five are the mounted Aryan priests who, it must be said, aren't particularly good in battle, but they're fun. And that's very much the name of the game here, it's entertainment. And I find these guys rather amusing. I don't know what that is, there's something about a big pile of priests galloping into battle and smashing up some Romans with big crosses, which I find quite funny. Of course, the main job in the battlefield is just to be a mobile support unit. And indeed, they can help in chasing down enemies. They can be useful, albeit mine actually artificially powerful due to the experience and the uh, silver sword and shield. Nonetheless, a little poke in the back of a weakened enemy might just finish them off. Yeah, get a few horses killed, but we've done it. There you go. They're not completely useless after all. They're not quite the Norse war clerics of Denmark in Medieval 2, but hey, they're fun and they're fairly unique after all. At number four, it is the glory of the Romano-British campaign. Yes, it is the Grohl Knights. A kind of nod to King Arthur, I suppose. These guys not only look amazing, but they really hit hard too. As you can see, they've routed every single one of these Frankish units they have slammed into. Oh, they are absolutely magnificent. Look at those fearsome masks. Anyway, the stats themselves are very, very solid. 28 defense, excellent morale, good stamina. What more could you ask for from your units? Now, of course, I love slaughtering the Frankish paladins as much as the next Englishman, but that's not the main reason I love this unit so much. Now, I think it's really to do with their elusiveness, the fact that they're such an unusual and rarely seen unit. Indeed, Roman and British themselves very rarely appear in the game unless you trigger them yourself. And of course, as a non-playable faction, you don't really ever get your hands on this unit. But I do actually have a guide on how you play as Roman and British. There'll be a link in the description below. But what I would say is once you get your hands on them, oh, the payoff is so sweet. They slaughter the enemy, that heavy armour, the powerful charge, just everything about them screams beauty and victory. Glory for Britannia. At number three are the Hounds of Kulan, a magnificent berserker unit slavered in delicious purple. Oh, what more could you ask on these guys? What's that? A warhammer you want? Well, they've got that too. These chaps are absolutely glorious. Of course, in Rome Total War, the name of the game is routing the enemy, and what is better than berserkers to do just that? Even the strongest of foes will be melting, melting like Swiss cheese when they come against these fellows. Now, of course, we're not the only berserker unit in the game, so why would I choose the Hounds of Kulan? Well, there's a couple reasons, really. And the first one is the fact that they've got armor-piercing damage, which the Lombardis don't have. They only have 11.75 in terms of their stats, obviously, consider the Berserk very important. Lombardis, however, are much more powerful, 1479, but no armor piercing. Now, in a straight head-to-head -head like we're having here, we will most likely lose, to be honest, because we can't make advantage of the armor piercing damage. But when it comes down to it, I think these guys are potentially more useful with the armor piercing, and actually, I think they're just more interesting overall. The Hound of Kulan is actually from Irish mythology, and technically there would only be one Hound of Kulan, so in many ways the game's taken some liberties by giving us whole units worth. But it makes it more interesting, and that's something that Rome Total War did very well. People often now talk about historical versus fantasy with Total War, but Rome was doing it back in 2004 as well. Yet of course, while the history would refer to only one Hound of Kulan, or indeed the mythology in this case, it makes the game more interesting to throw something like that into the game. It adds more character, and I really love this unit for it. At number two are the Clibinari Immortals, which are on here not only because they have such an impronounceable name, but also because they're just so damn badass. Look at these stats, 10, 11, 30. Of course, this is a general unit, so they actually have two hit points as well. Uh, there is no way I can't put these guys on the list. Now, in some ways, you might think that a general unit is kind of cheating, but no, these guys are just too fun. They are too ridiculous, bananas on toast even. And to be honest, there's no way I can't have them on the list. They are the natural successor to the Armenian heavy cataphract archers. And oh yes, throw an extra hit point into that. And these guys 
will just tear through anything. Now, of course, they actually have the arrows to pepper the enemy with before they arrive into battle, but once they have, they will chunk through all of their foes. These are actually first legionary cohorts of the Western Roman Empire here. And yet we're going to get out those maces, conk them over the head, and we'll very soon be chunking through this. I did this battle a few times in order just to get the footage here, and losing four or five men was actually about as bad as it got, to be honest. They are ridiculous. Watch them. Watch them destroy. These are legionary first cohort. Three eagles of Rome have fallen to us on this day. Anyone who's seen my Western Empire Rebels campaign will not be surprised at number one because at number one is the Chariot Ballista. These guys are utterly insane. You know what, forget the stats. They're long range missiles, effective against armor, and they're ballistas on chariots. Just get that in your head for a moment because these are absolutely ludicrous. Suffice to say that they're not exactly the most efficient of units in the world. With only 12 men on the large unit scale, you are going to find them picked off pretty easily by enemy missile units. Nonetheless, a usual ballista unit only has two ballistas shooting. These units have six, so once you start getting yourself the mobility, along with three times the usual ballista power, oh yeah, you can see here, the bodies just go flying. These lads are completely the harbingers of chaos. Where these guys really shine is in the open field, because these guys are old school skirmishers. Pick off the units from a distance, pull them out of position, and when they get too close, you just wheel around. You're a chariot after all, but the ballista can keep shooting. Using just one or two units of these chariots in your armies does cause so much chaos. They are generally very effective. Always, and I mean always, expect them to fall apart and die. A big part of my series was basically me crying every episode when I lost one of my chariots. They would always befall something like, I don't know, a random javelin here or there. They collapse incredibly quickly. And by the way, never use them in the cities. They're a chaotic mess in the cities, like all chariots. But they are just so much fun. Honestly, there is no better unit for me to live out my last days. Well, with that, we've logically reached the end of our little top five here today. I must say I very much enjoyed making this guide. A little bit different to the usual kind of video I make. But who knows, maybe we'll see more of these in the future. Do indeed put any comments down below of your favourite units. Love to know which are your favourite and why. Indeed, Barbarian Invasion is just one of those games that encapsulates the joy of Total War. It's from that era where they just threw in lots of interesting and fun units. I think obviously this game is just so full of that. So I'd love to hear what you thought of all of these and what choices you might make yourself. That's all for now then, ladies and gentlemen. And do indeed look out for the Chariot Ballistas in the end card. They will make a couple appearances. Don't you worry about that. I'm Thomas, this is Tenerys Dekirin, and this has been our top five entertaining units in Rome's Barbarian Invasion. Thank you, and goodbye. No! Not again! How did you lose to the archers? Anyone who's already got children, they've just been killed. Filthy pilchards, the lot of you. Oh, <laughs> Steve! You were the best of all the Steves. Rum, pa, 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 pa.